Uh, I'm Jenny Keith. Um, my show is called Keep Them Safe. Um, I'm a contemporary artist. I like to paint a lot of animals in nature, um, just generally inspired by the environment and the natural world. I've been working as an artist, well, like working full-time professionally for about 15 years, um, but I've been painting my whole life and drawing and it's been a passion since I could hold a crayon. Uh, so I wanted to feature um, Albertan animals that are threatened or endangered um, and just sort of showcase uh, how beautiful they are and what we're on the verge of losing entirely. And um, so there's three main animals. There's the woodland, caribou, the grizzly bear, and the whooping crane um, in three pretty distinct regions in Alberta. And then uh, all the animals that are also in their environment or they may come into contact with or plants that are in their environment. And um, so most of the things in each of the pieces are endangered or threatened themselves. And then there are some just essential elements of their environment that I also included to give them a little bit of space. Yeah, definitely do a lot, well, these ones especially, a lot of research. Um, it's difficult because it's it's Google research and uh, I try to make sure that, um, you know, it's coming from like proper scientific sources. Um, but every once in a while you're relying on the internet. So if there's any biologists out there that want to correct something, let me know. Um, but basically, I have an idea in my head coming more from an art perspective. And then uh, for these pieces, um, looking at the lists of uh, threatened, endangered species that need our attention Alberta um, and then from that list sort of having a look at some of these animals I'd never even heard of which was pretty incredible to learn about them pretty sad um, and then going through those lists figuring out which ones make sense with each painting make sense within the composition um, and then you know settling on a final grouping of animals uh, and then as you're painting them you can't help but learn through observation looking pretty closely at you know several different images of each animal um, and yeah you can learn a lot about nature just from looking at it. Um, so I do, the process basically starts with uh, a really ugly sketch uh, where I just sort of throw everything out and try to get like the balance and the composition right. Um, so I have an idea for the central animal and how I want it to look, and you can almost never find an image that's exactly what you want. So I've got, say, with uh, with the caribou or the grizzly bear, I've got, you know, I want his head turned this way, I want his arms this way, and I want the light hitting a certain way, so I have to combine three or four different images um, and sort of do up uh, like a loose sketch of, of his position and then placing all the other elements around the central animal. Um, so that's just in a little sketchbook. And then once that's more or less balanced, then I do up another sketch that's actually still really ugly, but at least it like looks like the thing that it is. Uh, and once I have that all placed, then I'll draw it, um, and it looks a lot nicer, on the, on the actual support. Uh, just with pencil, and it's, it's pretty loose, um, but that's when I start like tightening things up and I maybe do a little bit of rearranging um, until everything feels really set and balanced. Um, sort of finalize all the sketches to a detail, that uh, level of detail that I need to, to go for. Don't get too detailed because I'm just going to paint over it anyway, uh, which is the next step. Um, I'll paint I'll paint like a weird underlayer first. Uh, it makes sense to me. It's almost like the color of the shadow of the animal to just sort of get like a layer uh, started so you're not just painting on like a really pale surface because the under colors always come through and then I sort of build it in layers from there so a lot of these animals will be like deep blues and browns and purples and then build them up in layers um, from there and then the final little detail layer where I've got a teeny tiny paintbrush it's basically one hair and that's how I get all the little whiskers and highlights and stuff. Yeah um, I think that art can play a really important role in science and communication um, in ecology just because it's difficult to get out and see it sometimes and even if you're out there looking for a weasel or whatever it is uh, you might not find them and so if this can sort of be a bridge that it's I mean it's not a photograph uh, so it's not going to be exactly um, representative the way a photograph would but it can engage people who might not necessarily be outdoorsy 
uh, hiking people or who, who might not have the access to this and uh, it might spark some interest if you're coming at it from um, a different, more indoor space from an art gallery um, and then just bringing awareness, especially with these pieces, to um, like how, how beautiful they are and, and how sad it is that we might lose them. I think the favorite, my favorite part was just the end of it. Um, seeing them all together, uh, all the biodiversity, um, all these incredible things that are, they're all in Alberta. And like I said, like so everybody knows what a grizzly bear is, but there's, you know, a little tiny vagrant shrew and like certain types of little, like a pygmy whitefish or things like that. And you just see them all together, uh, things that you've maybe never thought about, never heard of, and um, realizing just like how rich the environment is uh, so close to home. I get a little, I hope they take away just um, an awareness, an appreciation, um, maybe, I mean, just a, a spark of a thought of anything that you could do. I mean, anything anybody can do to conserve them, I think is important, and just knowing about them is the first step, so, um, yeah.